So this is some very old footage that I found on my external hard drive because I back up everything. This was filmed way back in 2005 and that was with my Fuji camera. I have no idea what the quality of this will look like on YouTube, but I'm going to try to upload it anyway. Basically for the next five minutes, I'm showcasing you how I was feeding the mandarins in my 280 gallon reef. That tank had a lot of big fish. There's Spock's lips right there. There's the purple tang. You'll see the lawnmower blenny. You'll see the six line wrasse. I had four mandarins in this tank. There's the lawnmower blenny. That little guy, uh, as you can see, was well fed. He actually figured out how to get to that food. So let me explain what you're looking at. And please don't overreact. I was trying to figure out a way to feed mandarins back then in a tank full of voracious fish. What I ended up doing was I got this jar from the supermarket that they sell for olives. You know, those are long, narrow jars. And I don't even eat olives. So I had to go buy this to throw away the olives to get the jar. Then I bent a piece of acrylic around it to create a handle so that I could lower it into the tank. And I was putting pellet food inside of it. Now, why did I pick pellet food? I would have to go back even further then. And that was because way back when I set up my 29 gallon aquarium, and I bought my first mandarin, I discovered one day out of pure chance, I watched the mandarin eat pellet food off the sand bed and I couldn't believe it because we all know mandarins eat pods. They love their copepods, which are tiny microscopic bugs. And so having a fish like that in my 29 gallon where there's only a limited amount of rock work, that limited how much food that fish could find. And of course, there was blue damsel in there. There was a clownfish in there. There was shrimp in there. There was a long-nosed hawkfish, uh, flame angel. Uh, there was a lot of other fish. And yet the mandarin was staying nice and fat, and it turns out he was eating pellet food. So now, I had to break down the 29-gallon and my 55-gallon and combine all the livestock into my new 280-gallon tank back in 2004. And I noticed that the mandarins were looking a little thinner because they were not able to get to the food because of all these fast moving fish. So I thought, hey, those pellets worked years ago. I wonder if I can do it again. <laughs> as you can see, the lawnmower blenny just snuck in there and is getting a nice belly full of pellet food. That's either, for well, it's actually that's both Formula One and Formula Two, uh, which would be the omnivore and the herbivore pellet food. And as you can see, the tangs really want it but they can't get to it. And that's the beauty of the Mandarin Diner. I lowered the diner into the tank, filled with some pellet food, and tried to put in a spot where the mandarins tended to congregate. Uh, Spock, by the way, did figure out a way to get food out of there, which was rather hilarious. She would face the end of the jar and wave her front pectoral fins back and forth, creating a backflow, which made the pellets tumble out where she could get all the food she needed but not on this day, not when I was filming this uh, video. So there's the two mandarins. There's the larger one is a male. The smaller one, which you'll see go into the diner, is a female. And the way you can tell a mandarin being male or female is the spike on its back. She has a very short little spike that she'll stand up here in a moment, where he has a much longer spike that's laying down across his back right now, and he may stand it up at some point. I'm unsure. Uh, and as you can see now, she's going to go try some pellet food. And so as you're watching, you'll see she's spitting it out, but she's also eating some. I think she, the bites are too big, and so she's inhaling some of the dust instead. But this actually worked. It worked for all of my mandarins, and I was really pleased by this because I didn't have to worry about them getting a meal. So each day, I would put a little bit of pellet food, or I put in some roe, which is fish eggs, or whatever it just came to mind, and I put it inside this jar, and sometimes I'd see the six line wrasse sneak in there. Sometimes I saw hermit crabs go in there. Sometimes snails went in there. But it was just a chance for these slower moving fish to get a meal inside an active reef. And it worked out really, really well. In case some of you are concerned that this jar is too small, that the fish can't turn around, well, that's part of the beauty of creating a spot where only certain fish can get to the food. Yes, there were a couple of times where I saw a mandarin go in and freak out and it had to figure its way out by backing up and that's obviously not what a fish wants to do. It tends to swim away when it feels like it's at risk. But if I went with a larger jar, the, fish, the other fish could get in there or would be able to make the water move to get the food out. So I worked with a small jar.
and this worked out really fine. I never had anything bad happen, and the fish kept going back in, so they learned. They learned that it wasn't dangerous. It's just they get spooked when all the big fish are coming at that jar from all angles, and they're seeing through the glass all these giant fish coming at them. So I can understand why they'd start to feel some trepidation. So here's the male coming in behind the female. And then here is my beautiful target mandarin. She was a little aggressive, so I think that's what was spooking this uh, female psychedelic mandarin now who's leaving the jar. She's done eating. She'd rather be anywhere else than in front of all those mouths. But that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it.